Alright, welcome everyone. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be short and sweet and to the point. Uh, there's a question that I get at least once a week, usually multiple times a week, about this little trick that I do where you can have something selected and then deselect it and be able to color without going into other areas. And I do this in a lot of videos. Um, well, I do this every time that I'm working. Um, so whether you're using a brush tool, for example, like this, or I'm using a bucket tool like that, I get a lot of questions about how that works. And I've explained this in, in other videos, but it's a really simple little trick that I'm going to show you here. So what we're going to be using to do this, uh, just to make this go a little bit faster, is to use a Photoshop action and an action in Photoshop is basically just a series of steps that's pre-recorded so that if you do it a lot you can set it up as an action you can see I've got some in here for creating uh, making flats or flattening changing to CMYK and color holds all sort of different things here so I want to explain first what the action is going to do just so you'll understand so when I have something highlighted that I'm going to be rendering, let's say that I want to render her skin. Now I'm just going to press F4. That's what I've got it set to, and it's going to run my action. And now I cannot color outside of her skin. So this is really helpful when you're when you're rendering, and you you want to be able to be loose and fast with your with your brush and not have to worry about getting it everywhere else. So I'll back up and explain what this action does. So first thing is to make sure that your selection is highlighted and then the action runs now control J I'm going to press that now you'll see that it copies the selection to a new layer so you can see over here we've just got the inks and now we have this new layer with just her skin tone and then you've got the flats here below that so I've got her skin tone flats inks And the next thing that the action is going to do is lock the transparency or lock transparent pixels I believe it's called and that's what actually prevents it from going outside um, if you leave that off you can see that you can go outside those lines so we want to lock that transparency so that's all that action really does is control J copies that selection to a new layer and then it locks the transparency of that layer so that when I'm done all I've got to do is merge that back down and I'll, you'll see me do this in videos repeatedly so uh, we'll do this uh, we'll make this action just in case you uh, are not real familiar with that so uh, first off again the action is going to it needs to know where to start and in my case this needs to be selected in order for the action to run or your, your, your the selection you're going to be coloring needs to be selected and then I'm going to hit this little icon here. It looks like a folded piece of paper. That's the new action. And we'll call it, um, we'll call it uh, layer action just for that, have something in here. And you can set the uh, color of it in the thing. You can set what key you want it to go to. Uh, we'll say F12. You can also choose to add shift or control or whatever. Uh, mine is usually set to F4 because it's easy to get to, but that doesn't matter. Set it to whatever you want. And then, and then press record. And now it's recording everything we're going to do. So the first thing is going to be Control J. So that's a layer via copy. So now it's on top. And now I'm going to lock the transparency. And then I'm going to hit stop on the actions window. And that's it you're done so now you can see I'm going to delete this layer I can highlight her hair press F4 there we go her lips Let me go back down to my flats so show you just how easy this is and the next thing there's one more aspect of this that you want to keep in mind which is your bucket tool settings if they're not correct, then, and I'll show you the difference here. Let me make sure I know the difference here. Let 
well, it's actually working both ways. So, um, But the settings on the bucket tool, you want to make sure, I've got the bucket tool selected now, you want to make sure anti-alias is unchecked. You want to make sure that contiguous is unchecked, or contiguous, I don't know how you say that. And you want to make sure that all layers is unchecked. And so now if I want to fill this with the bucket tool, instead of filling the entire selection, it just fills the color, which is, again, hugely uh, important when you're flatting. It saves a ton of time. So um, if, you, if you change the, well, maybe it's the tolerance, you'll see that it's filling the whole the whole window here, the whole selection. And that's really never helpful to me. So um, you want to make sure you leave that at zero. So again, quick recap. If you make your action, again it's only two steps. Press new to start the action, control J, and then, um, let's see, where is our new action? There, layer action, sorry. So um, control J, layer via copy, and then make sure you set it to uh, lock transparency. And then that's all there is to it. So I select my area, run the action, and render away. So I hope you guys like this video. I'm going to try to make a little series here of shorter videos uh, for those of you that have the standard YouTube uh, attention span. So I'll be doing uh, some of these, and we'll discuss some other aspects coming up very soon. So thanks again for watching, and we will talk soon.